Welcome back to So Much Black. A few weeks ago, a uh, dear viewer of this channel has mentioned to me that some researchers in Maryland have developed a new textile material that can manage temperature and body temperature in a new and experimental way. They published their results in the journal Science in a paper named Dynamic Gating of Infrared Radiation in a Textile. In this video I will go through this paper with you, explain the science behind it, how it functions and also give you a little bit insight of the applicability of this material, the possible future and how, what I think from it also as a consumer. If you have any thoughts about thermal managing textiles in general or about this material, please share it down in the comments below. I love to hear your thoughts and experiences on this topic. This is the first video of a series I have long planned, in which I want to look at techwear and explain how it functions. Always keeping in mind how usable something is and what that means for our functional clothing and equipment. If you're interested in the science behind functional clothing, give this video a thumbs up and I would love to give you more of this video. Of course, I will link all the sources I used down in the description if you want to take a look at them yourself and dig deeper into the material. Before we can understand the paper about a thermal management textile, we first have to understand how the body adapts to different temperatures. With skin temperatures between 33 degrees Celsius and 34 degrees Celsius, we are comfortable. Of course, we are more comfortable in lower temperatures as soon as we are actively working out. Any skin temperature lower than 18 degrees Celsius or above 45 degrees Celsius causes pain. Too low of a core body temperature, so about 28 degrees Celsius or lower, can cause death. And temperatures above 46 degrees Celsius can cause irreversible brain damage. We have some mechanics to keep the body at a comfortable temperature level or to at least get it to the safe level again. So to make us warmer or to get us colder. The heat generated in the human body can escape through four different vectors. First, through convection. So when airflow takes away the warm air and replaces it with a colder layer of air through radiation, so we radiate infrared radiation away from us, which carries the heat. Evaporative, so if you have sweat on the surface of your skin and it evaporates, it has to take away some of the temperature of your skin to get the energy to get go into the gaseous state. So evaporating sweat always reduces your skin temperature. And also we lose a little bit of temperature through respiration. So, so the exchange of air between the body core, which is in this case your lungs, and the environment. Respiration is mostly a diminishing part of the equation, but it also is there. As soon as we are physically active, the, the body temperature rises and we pump more blood to our extremities and to our skin surface where the skin temperature rises and we lose heat to our environment. We also start to sweat and the sensation of skin wettedness is one of the primal factors for thermal discomfort. So if you are feeling sweaty, you are almost certainly not comfortable in it. About 35% or a quarter of your body can be wet from sweat and you can still be a little bit comfortable but above that many sources report that it's uncomfortable. As soon as we put clothes on this is an additional part in the system complicating the matter. Clothing is an additional layer on the skin so it does two things. First it decreases your effective skin area so it hinders sweat and air so moisture vapor to get through. And second, 
it can actively insulate the wearer from the outside environment by creating an additional layer of air that doesn't get moved between your skin and the environment. Because your thermal discomfort is so closely tied to your skin wettedness, we want to try to limit the accumulation of sweat in the clothing. There are two ways of managing thermal comfort in clothing. First, you can cool yourself as efficient as possible. And second, you can try to have excellent moisture management that the moisture doesn't build up in your system. Efficient moisture management is especially important in cold protective clothing because you have so many layers on your body that the moisture always will stick somewhere around and you won't get rid of it entirely. But getting it to the outside layers is very important. Especially if you don't want to shed extra layers because you will be not as active anymore in the next five minutes or so. Peng and others researched a polyethylene fabric that has nanometer sized pores and appears opaque white through this and is relatively transparent to the mid-infrared spectrum. This fabric effectively cools your skin temperature by 2 to 3 degrees Celsius and is durable enough to be worn as clothing. On the other hand, you can use phase change materials. Phase change materials are materials that you can put inside a fabric weave that are little balls of plastics and they have a melting point of exactly the operating temperature of your system. So at about 33 degrees Celsius or 34 degrees Celsius, they start to melt and Melting uses heat, like evaporation, like sweat evaporation uses. And as soon as you get below your operating temperature, so around 33 degrees Celsius, the phase change materials start to solidify again, and this generates heat. So having some phase changes going on, so melting or solidifying, the materials save or give heat according to the situation. Phase change materials are for example used in Outlast insoles in your shoes for example. But this is also usable in other types of clothing to expand the time frame or temperature range in which you can use the clothing comfortably. Okay, so how solve Zhang and others this problem? Since about 40% of the body heat escapes to the environment via infrared radiation. These researchers tried to manage a way to let the infrared radiation escape from your clothing system instead of trying to get rid of the sweat problem. They engineered a way to dynamically manage the infrared radiation instead of letting it off in a constant rate. So this new fabric keeps you cool if it's hot by letting out all the infrared radiation but keeping you warm when it's cold by keeping all the infrared radiation in the textile and in your clothing system. Okay, so how do the researchers in Maryland manage the infrared radiation? Infrared radiation is a type of light in the infrared spectrum. You can see it here on a graphics and the infrared spectrum is a little bit longer in its wavelength so it's not as energy intensive as the visible light and it's between the microwave radiation and the visible light. Um, the wavelength of 10 to the minus 3 to 10 to the minus 6 meters. So it's in the range of micrometers to nanometers. The wavelength of the infrared radiation is very important here because objects that are smaller or equal in size as the waves can interact with light waves. So if you have a wavelength that's this long and you have an object that's this small this object can interact and with the light and absorb it. This is interesting A for visible light, but B of course here since they took carbon nanotubes, so 
tubes out of graphite. So essentially thin pieces of graphite you get when you are using a mechanical or non-mechanical pencil. Um, and this graphite is rolled into to one layered or multi-layered tubes. And these carbon nanotubes are of the exact same size as the wavelength of the infrared radiation is. And therefore they can absorb infrared radiation. And those carbon nanotubes absorb more infrared radiation when they are uh, nearer together and less radiation when they are further apart. This makes up the infrared part of the equation. But how do they make the infrared radiation going through or not going through in an adaptive way? They applied the carbon nanotubes to a bimorph textile fiber. So we have a textile fiber that's comprised of two polymers, two different materials and one fiber. One of the materials is cellulose, so it's made from trees or cotton, for example, and the other polymer is a triacetate, so a different polymer. And these two uh, materials react differently to moisture. One of the materials now is more hygroscopic, it absorbs water easier than the other one. So, as soon as the fabric gets wet, for example, if you are sweating because it's too, too warm for you, then the fabric crimps and it deforms. So the fabric essentially opens pores up if it's hot and you're warm and you're sweating. And if you're not sweating because it's not warm, either cold, the fabric closes together and absorbs the infrared radiation. From your body. The scientists tested this, this fabric by putting it into an environmental chamber with a controlled environment and shining infrared light through it onto a detector. While controlling the temperature and the humidity in the, in the system, only the newly discovered metatextile reacted to the change in moisture or in temperature in comparison to the control fabric. The control fabric was the same bimorph fiber, so it reacted to the moisture, but it didn't have the carbon nanotube coating, so it didn't react to the infrared radiation. So what do we get from this research? Um, I have to quote Ray Borman. He said uh, he's he is a professor of chemistry on the University of Texas and he was not involved in the study. He said, this pioneering work provides an exciting new switchable characteristic for comfort adjusting clothing. Textiles were known that increase porosity in response to sweat or increasing temperature as well as textiles that transmit the infrared radiation associated with body temperatures. However, no one before had found a way to switch both the porosity and infrared transparency of a textile so as to provide increased comfort in response to environmental conditions. To this source, I was linked from Schöller on LinkedIn. Schöller is a well-known fabric manufacturer in Switzerland and they are also researching on this topic. They are also trying to solve this problem but they didn't get as far as fast as the researchers in Maryland got. So this is pretty exciting news for the fabric and functional fabric industry. However, I could not fact check some of the things the researchers went on from. For example, the researchers in the paper said that about 40% of our body heat gets lost through radiation. I think this is greatly dependent on where you are, what you are doing. For example, if you are in a wind tunnel, then you will lose a great amount of temperature more from convective cooling, from the airflow in the wind, than through, inf uh, through radiative cooling. Um, and if you are in space, <laughs> you are obviously not going through convective cooling or any sort of that because there is no convection, there is no matter that you can convect through. So you will only lose 
uh, temperature through radiation. In normal cases it might be true, but I couldn't get really good sources about that. So, so this assumption might be true and it might be false. Okay, so this is pretty exciting news, but is it actually usable? Um, if you are at rest and you don't do anything sporty, then this fabric is definitely interesting to use. You have a, an expansion of your temperature range in which you are active and comfortable because the fabric can either trap or get rid of your infrared radiation and your heat in a limited way. So if you don't do any activities, you will be warmer when it's a little bit cold and you will be colder if it's a little bit warm. As soon as you start to be very active hiking up a mountain or, or running to the bus, a very fast and high paced activity, then you might get problems. But on the other hand side, for the normal user, this is a very interesting fabric. As soon as you wear other layers above the textile, like in coat protective clothing, it gets complicated. Uh, there are some papers about layering your clothing and how effective which layer is and which type of material for your overall moisture management and breathability and isolation. But I'm not deep enough down in this research to give you some valuable information about this yet. If you're interested in this topic, you may consider subscribing because in one of the future videos in this Techware Explained series, I will get to breathability. I, for my part, am really interested in how this fabric evolves. Um, this is the first iteration and the first publication about a new material, so it will take some time, about uh, if, possibly a few years, to get really usable in an industrial way. But this is exciting news for all of us who are hungry for news and information about newly developed functional materials. That's it for today. If you want to subscribe, you can do this here. And if you want to see one of my other videos, you can do this here if you click the link. Thank you a great deal for watching and have a nice day.